Welcome to the conference. This is AMI Inside. Welcome to the Miles Nadal Jewish Community Center at the corner of Spadina and Bloor here in Toronto, home to the 2018 WCW Experience Expo. This is the third annual Experience Expo, and it is clear from our view here on the second floor that the event grows larger and larger each year. The Expo was hosted by the CCB Toronto Visionaries Chapter of the Canadian Council of the Blind, and President Ian White explains why an event like this is important. One of the things that this Expo does is it allows you to sort of explore what options are open to you, what possibilities there are out there. One of the things I found really tricky when I lost my vision was that I found it really hard to imagine what was even possible for me. And it was only through getting connected with a network of people in the vision loss community that I discovered there was sculpture for people with vision loss. There were all kinds of sports and activities. I could get connected to alternate reading materials so that I could go back to reading, which was a love of mine. There were all these resources available, but I didn't know how to get at them because I didn't know any other blind people. So one of the things that the CCB Toronto Visionaries is really, really strong on is trying to encourage people to come together, to get together with other blind people, and through those casual social interactions, to discover what possibilities are out there just by having those conversations and expanding your network, expanding your knowledge base. We have 46 organizations represented here. Everything from uh, employment, to recreation, to sports, to arts and entertainment. We've got adaptive technology companies, we have advocacy groups, we have government agencies all represented here, as well as uh, rehab functions and primary care eye research. There are so many different aspects to this show now, and the diversity is, I think, what is one of its great strengths. The idea is to sort of reach as far as we can into the sighted community because I think a lot of sighted people don't have enough exposure to people living with vision loss to be aware of what the possibilities are, to be aware not just of what the possibilities are in terms of supporting someone with vision loss, but also to be aware of the contributions that people with vision loss can make, of how interesting and interested they are as people, and that really the only thing that differentiates them from any other person you might meet is that they happen to be dealing with a vision loss. The 2018 WCW Experience Expo is actually one of many, many events that are happening across the country as part of White Cane Week, which is a, a public awareness campaign that is uh, put on by the Canadian Council of the Blind through its 87 chapters across the country. These range in, in uh, scope from uh, setting up a, an information kiosk in a mall to having an open house to mounting a, a sporting event or um, generally just sort of getting out and trying to communicate with as many people as possible about some of the issues that are, um, that are really uh, concerning people living with vision loss. Rosie R. Curie, assistive technology instructor at Balance for Blind Adults, tells us about Balance and its services. Balance was created 30 years ago, and our goal is to be an innovative, community-oriented organization that helps people who have visual impairments, uh, whether it be legally blind or totally blind. And we're, we're very much based into the community. Our goal is to help people get out and uh, help them kind of um, get involved um, in whichever way they want to, and we do that based on help, by helping them through our services. One of the things that makes Balance really special is we have a lot less people. Our goal is really to give more one-to-one -one, uh, help and um, or, or small group help. We're able to see people a lot more than potentially other organizations. So if somebody would like to learn more about Balance or, or get a service from us, obviously there's a website, which is www.balance, B-A-L-A-N-C-E, F-B-A, for blind adults, org. It's a great place to get information to see your upcoming events, including all the workshops. But if you want to uh, then you know, take the step and actually come to see us or, or get service from us, you'd have to call the office. 
So the number is 416-236-1796. Brian Mock, who owns a Shoppers Drug Mart at Bayview and Broadway, was at the expo to promote their latest service for the blind and partially sighted community. It's a script talk, so it's basically a prescription bottle reader. Uh, so it reads the label to you um, so that if you're visually impaired, it can kind of read all the information that's on the label. When you bring your prescriptions into the Shoppers Drug Mart, we'll basically uh, program a, a microchip that goes on the bottom of the vial, corresponds with the label, uh, and then this label goes on the, um, on the device to read it. Uh, and then once you, you can hit read and it reads the label out to you. Yeah. It takes about five to 10 days to get the device. Uh, it's provided free. People that can't see their prescriptions or their bottles uh, can know what's in the bottles, uh, able to figure out how to take them. Uh, you know, once they leave the pharmacy, uh, if you have multiple medications, it, it gets confusing for sure. After the break, we'll meet some more exhibitors and get to know their products and services. AMI Inside will return. This is AMI Inside. Welcome back to the Miles Nadal Jewish Community Center. Adaptive technologies and services for people who are living with sight loss are always a highlight of the Experience Expo. Stephen Ricci, Service and Training Manager for Frontier Computing, which is Canada's leading supplier for assistive technologies, shows us the latest in head-worn video magnifiers. Something that we're kind of showcasing here today is the Iris Vision head-worn eyewear. And it's a pretty cool product that uh, fits in the category of head-worn um, video magnifiers. There are other products that we sell that are in this category. This one is, is sort of um, a newer product. It's uh, from some um, folks out in, in uh, California. And, and what they've done is they've used off-the-shelf products like these um, G, G um, Google, uh, goggles and they have an Android uh, Samsung phone and using an app, it's, it's like wearing electronic binoculars. The, what appeals to me with this particular product are three significant points. Number one, the price, it's, it's the most inexpensive, affordable price point of this category. Number two, I believe it has one of the largest field of views, so therefore you can see more um, and it's also, the third point is that it's bright. Very nice, bright image. It may not have the optics of some of the other competing products in this category, but for me, it really allows me to see better because of the fact that the field of view and the brightness is spectacular for me. And it's all off the shelf stuff, so therefore the price is, is much more affordable than the other ones. The Alliance for Equality of Blind Canadians, better known as the AEBC, is all about advocacy for people who are blind and or partially sighted. Yin Brown, president of the Toronto chapter of the AEBC, is at the expo to spread the word about the AEBC and its role. AEBC, or the Alliance for Equality of Blind Canadians, is a national grassroots peer support advocacy group where uh, people who are blind, partially sighted, deaf blind come together to advocate for our equal access to um, things like transportation, public space, uh, well this year election, the election process, and uh, we also have an employment project that we're working on. We got a two-year grant from the City of Toronto and what we're doing is training job seekers to self-advocate, to learn the skills and the knowledge needed to advocate for better access to employment services and programs. Because often we find that when we go to employment services who are supposed to help us with a job search, that sometimes they don't even understand the nature of our disability, the accommodations needed, or the kind of jobs that would suit us better. We know our issues best. So if, if we are constantly the end users of services, we should also be speaking up for how these services should be delivered. 
If people are interested in joining AEBC Toronto Chapter to learn about self-advocacy or to do self-advocacy with us, please contact us by email, which is aebctoronto at gmail.com. Voices for Ability is Canada's first 24-7 internet radio station that is by, for, and about people with disabilities. Sean Picard is the station manager, and he tells us about the station and its programs. Voices for Ability is an internet-based uh, radio station. It's run for, by, and about individuals with disabilities. It's uh, a mix of programming, from uh, your classic music, uh, some of your older artists, to uh, you know, some relevant topics, talk shows, uh, relevant to uh, individuals with disabilities today. We actually uh, look for ideas from uh, our listening audience, so if you have anything you want to get into us, uh, v4a radio at gmail.com. Uh, we also run a class, and the class is a broadcast training program. Uh, we use it to uh, educate, get some experience in uh, writing material, producing and editing, uh, mostly radio. And uh, what we do with that is uh, just look to give folks the experience, and the ideas come from that as well. We use that to uh, springboard folks into it. You can listen live at v4aradio.com. Uh, there's uh, information at Connect for Life and uh, V4A Radio on the broadcast training program. And uh, we're actually starting uh, something interesting uh, this month. We're doing a campaign with uh, local uh, nonprofits, just looking to get some more word out about the work they do with their folks. And the campaign that we started is uh, actually called Giving Voice to Your Ability. Just looking to uh, express more out there to the community at large. Dr. Anna Jurisic is a low vision optometrist at the Low Vision Clinic in Toronto. She describes some of the services provided at the clinic. I'm very big on letting my patients be aware of all the new technology and the advancements that have occurred, especially in the last year. So I'm proud to carry some um, very new aids that are making a tremendous difference for people with vision loss. The one that I'm most excited about is the OrCam 2.0. We do have the original OrCam, and the original OrCam was a wired system which would actually have to mount onto a pair of glasses, there would be a wire, and you'd have to hold a box. And this is now the new OrCam 2.0 that was launched in North America in December of 2017. And all the user would have to do is clip it onto a special mount that's on a frame and it just clips on magnetically. So if I had the mount on my glasses, I would have it just mounted right onto my glasses. And this allows a user to be able to have text to print converted into speech. So if they're looking at a menu, it would be able to read the menu back. They're at a doctor's office and there's some paperwork that's been given to them. They can look down at the paperwork and it would read it back. It even goes beyond that. You can actually save faces in here. So you can actually save the faces of loved ones. So if you're standing, there's a group of people, if the camera picks up the face that's been recognized, it would actually say the name and you hear it. It can also identify monetary currency. So if you're holding 20 Canadian dollars in your hand and you're looking at it, it would say 20 Canadian dollars. And if it's American, it would just say 20 dollars. It can even pick up some barcodes, universal barcodes. They have about 750,000 saved. So if you're in a grocery store and you're picking up a food product and you're looking at the barcode, if it's one that's been saved in the system, it would actually identify the product that's in your hands. So it's pretty impressive. So I love products that are so inclusive and especially when technology really looks at how can they help increase independence for the end user. And OrCam 2.0, They've done an impressive job. After the break, we check out some adaptive sports. AMI Inside will return. This is AMI Inside. Welcome back. Sports and leisure activities enable a person with vision loss to get active and become connected with their community. Rhonda Gohari, Developmental Marketing Manager at Ontario Blind Sports Association, or OBSA, is here to help with that. Basically, Ontario Blind Sports uh, sanctions all sports possible, mainly goalball, because uh, we are the only place in the province that 
we do goalball, goalball events. We have goalball equipment, goalball athletes, so we are the provincial lead of goalball. But we also have any kind of sports that deal with uh, people who are blind or visually impaired, such as swimming, athletics, wrestling, judo, tandem biking. So any sort of sport that you wish to pursue, we are more than happy to uh, lead you in doing so. Uh, we have our coaches, we have our officials, and that's basically what we do. I think with every single sport, it's adaptable, uh, definitely for the blind and visually impaired. We have uh, different organizations across the province, and these organizations offer multiple sports, so you can join blind soccer, blind baseball, blind hockey, blind golf, and we will be more than happy to connect you with the people in lead, and they will be helping you join them, and it will be awesome. Well, we would love to get in touch with whoever would like to participate in sport and we would love to help. So they can definitely contact us through blindsports.on.ca or they can contact my phone number which is 416-855-0972 or my email which is my first name randa at blindsports.on.ca and we'll get you whatever you need to join sport. We would love to have you. Blind curling is a popular sport that has been adapted for people with vision loss. David Lee, a member of Toronto Blind Curling Club, tells us about the adaptations and the club. The Blind Curling Club has been going since about 2003 or 2004. And uh, we compete in uh, provincial playdowns to get entry to the nationals each year. On a competitive blind curling team, you require one B1 person who is basically less than 5% vision, and the other three per people can be a combination of B2s and B3s with a maximum of two B3s. We have sighted guides that will uh, guide us in the direction that we, the skip wants us to throw the rock. So depending on your, uh, uh, your vision condition, the guide can be three feet away from you or 20 feet away. Like for the, the, the B1 curlers, the guide may even tap the ice just to give the curler a sense of direction. Curling is a game of feel, so just knowing the direction and what turn to put, put on the rock is, is about all you got to know. If people are interested in joining our club, we have a website that they can go on to, the Toronto Blind Curling Club, or they can phone the Royal Canadian Curling Club in Toronto, and they can give you information as well. Wine St. Dennis is the manager of the Toronto Ice Owls, one of the many blind hockey teams across Canada. He talks about the game and how much fun it is to play. The Ice Owls started back in 1972, so that's how long they've been playing. It started with a couple coaches in the Toronto Hockey League that uh, got together and wanted to do something together, so they started blind hockey team. Well, the first biggest adaptation was the puck. But this wasn't the first puck. The first puck that we used was a wheel. And the wheel was a plastic puck that had pins in it that rattled. When the puck moves on the ice and the players are stick handling, it makes that noise. People like myself that are a little higher partial vision, we can hear it in a uh, further away. And um, it's bigger, so when it comes closer, we can see it. But for the players with less vision, they can hear it as it's being moved around the ice. When you say blind hockey, people, I think, have it in their mind that it's going to be people skating really slow looking for a puck. But people that have come to watch us play, the first thing they say is, I was amazed at the skill and the speed of the game. If somebody wants to uh, join the Ice Owls, they can uh, go onto our uh, webpage and uh, contact me. My, uh, my email address is there or on our Facebook page and our contact information is there. And we can talk about blind hockey. and. Uh, and if you're, you're interested in playing, just give us, uh, send us an email. The event wrapped up with a community social. As Ian White says, the social gives the community a chance to get together and celebrate its successes, strengths, diversities, and enjoy some great food and music. That's it from the WCW Experience Expo. Thanks for watching. Producer Arthur Presick, narrator Melissa Keith. Videographers, Arthur Presick, Ryland Valley. Editors, Arthur Presick, Mariam Baxiar. 
Integrated Describe Video Specialist Ron Rickford, Production Supervisor Janice Civitilli, Director Production Kara Nye, Director Programming Brian Perdue, Vice President Programming and Production John Melville, President and CEO David Arrington, Copyright 2018 Accessible Media Incorporated.